Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Number 42. 42. My favorite. My favorite. My lucky number. Is that because you're 42? No, I've been 42 three years now. Oh, so, it, okay. It's not that. It, it's just a family number. I don't know why, but it goes way back. My cousin had a cat named 42. When really? we were kids. Who go figure? Yeah, I just used to name cats after the street I found them on. You know, like Cleveland Third Cat street. and Elmwood <laughs> Cat. You know, it's that sort of thing. Third anyway, street. it's time for Tech Talk. If you've got a tech question, a home voiceover studio tech question, here's your chance to ask the guys that know about it. And throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is sitting there at the chat room in Facebook. And we will get to that question sometime during the uh, course of the show. But we got interesting stories about your move. And we're going to talk about gas. G spot, you know, period, A, period, S, period. Oh, yeah, that kind of gas. That kind of gas. And, uh, and then we'll answer your questions. And we'll have a good time telling you how to do it right here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. So don't go away. It's time right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Forty Talk. Do. <sighs> yeah, we're here to uh, talk about home voiceover studios. You know, someone said, who's going to want to watch a TV show about home voiceover studios? Almost 10 years ago that you and I started working on this. Yeah. And, and here it's we are. More than nine and a half. So we can now say officially almost 10. ten. Almost 10. I mean, we <laughs> thought about it at least 10 years ago. but it, Yeah, for sure. You know, it'll be 10 years in March. I you know, it was going to be a radio show originally. Yeah. It's just going to be audio. Yeah, it was going to be and, like a podcast when podcast was kind of... Yeah, we were trying to do a live podcast. It wasn't really a thing. Yeah. So, let's so sorry the about the video. Sorry about the video. It's been a pain the last nine and a half years. <laughs> I'm glad we did it anyway. <laughs> it makes for a more interesting show. But anyway. It definitely does. Yeah. But we're here to help you with your home voiceover studio. And there's a reason why. Because George and I have probably built more home voiceover studios than anybody else on the planet, because most people have built one, their own, maybe two if they've moved, which is something we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, but, you know, it's like we get emails all the time from people saying, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Or I have no idea what I'm doing, which, of course, we've gotten a lot of lately because... You know, aside from the voice actors who were voice actors, but they all went into somebody else's studio. Right. Because a lot of the film studios have shut down. We've gotten a lot of actors. Like the ADR people and the right. animation and, and the cartoons, especially the cartoon voices. Right. A lot of people didn't have studios. Right. And and people who are just primarily screen actors, uh, they, they're like, well, I can try voiceover. Oh, I've got to do this home studio thing. 
Who do I talk to? Well, you could call the Ghostbusters or you could call us. Uh, and because we know how to do it. We know how to make it work with just about any space if you've got the right space. And if you don't have the right space, then we tell you how to create the right space because it's all about the right space. It is indeed. And acoustics uh, are everything. Acoustics are everything, which is one of the things that always ticks us off when we see these specs saying you've got to have this microphone, we got to have this, got never worried about acoustics because you could have a $10,000 Neumann microphone, but if you do it in your bathroom, it's going to sound really like your bathroom. Yes, it's going to sound like what goes in the bathroom. That's right. It's going to it's going to highlight all the imperfections that are in the room you have. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, you keep it simple. You keep it simple. But we teach you how to do it from soup to nuts, from acoustics, mic technique, and how to set levels and how to use your software. That's what we do. And if you want to work with George, who's great at teaching this stuff, he's got lots of cool videos, and he loves talking to you, you go to... Oh, yes, by now my website should oh, be working again. That's georgethe.tech. Tech. George and uh, Tech. you can see all my services that I have available. I have quite a menu of different ways we can work together, specific things I can do for you. And it could just be as simple as a sound check or, as Dan calls it, a specimen collection. That's right. Yeah, you can go to my website uh, over at homevoiceoverstudio.com. There it is right there. And scroll to the bottom of the page, find the specimen collection cup, follow the instructions to the T. And I want your raw audio. Uh, it's like, hey, can I show you all the processing I do? No. I want to see if you need to be doing all that processing. And right. uh, let me give it a listen. Usually, now George, it usually takes like five seconds and we know exactly what's going on with somebody's audio. It's, it's much, absolutely yeah. amazing because... We've listened to thousands of files, and it's amazing how, you know, the, the thing is, is that your voice is different. You're, the room you're in is different, but j there's a way it's supposed to sound, and it's going to be your sound, but it's going to sound right after we work with you. So, uh, you and know. Thanks to Dan's whistle. Which we is what it's what supposed, it's supposed, to, supposed sound like. to sound like. Exactly. So uh, that's why we're here. And uh, so check us out. You know, like I said, there's a few guys that say, yeah, we do home studios. Go to the guys that know how to do it right. Okay. Enough of plug a palooza, as it says on the show notes. <laughs> That's enough. That's en on. enough for now. As, as we all may have heard or watched on Facebook, uh, you had yourself an interesting week a couple weeks ago. You had a move which probably brought up all sorts of interesting thoughts about what if you're a voice actor and you got to move? So tell us about it. Yeah. In fact, there's the airplane right now. <laughs> the airplane? Yeah, there's a small plane flying past. Oh, okay. I have I have a lot of processing on this mic. And yes, I can get away with that because I'm doing a show. <laughs> it's very different from doing voiceover. You're not the only one near the Santa Monica airport. I have a lot of clients over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm very close to the Santa Monica airport. And... Uh, Yes, I ended up here after a really unfortunate turn of events with my other residents in Topanga, and it was just decided that uh, I shouldn't live there anymore. <laughs> and sometimes All when right. that decision is made for you, you just have to listen, not fight it, and move on. And luckily, uh, with my girlfriend, we were able to find a great place on extremely short notice and move in, But and it's got a lot of pros. But if I was a voice actor... This would definitely not be where I would want to live. So I can see why a lot of voice actors choose to not live on the west side, anywhere near the Santa Monica Air. Especially like right at the end of the runway. I have a couple of clients. This is a great place. Yeah, this is the problem with Venice and parts of Santa Monica. You're, um, there's an airport very nearby, and the planes are slow-moving prop planes. So, uh, you know, they can be a little bit annoying. So the, the, I'm dealing with those issues here. Now, again, I'm not doing voiceover here. If, if I was a voice actor, I, like when I, when I came into this house and it was a blank slate with all hardwood floors and it's single glass pane casement windows from the 50s, which were lovingly cared for and restored and sadly not replaced. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was looking at them like, wow, these, they did a great job retaining these old Crappy freaking windows, but they work perfectly. But they're, ah, I hate these windows. 
It's what all the places have on the west side, you know, the old sliding casement, the kind with a little rope and a little weight, yeah. you know, those yeah. things? You, you move the window here, bum, 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 bum. It's a good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And well, the these well. were, this place was carefully restored. Like the floor's original, but really nice. Every, it's really well done, but it's still single pane glass. Zero air seal of any kind. When there's a weed whacker right outside, I keep checking. Is my window open? I'm like messing with. No, it, it's it's closed. Sorry for your luck. And there's two large windows right next to each other, so it's really bad. So what I'm gonna I'm what, what am I gonna do? I'm one of the things I'm considering. Probably one of the first things I'm gonna do is, and you know, there's also, and I'm grateful, it has central air, uh, central a, uh, HVAC system, and it's you know for the unit. I have control over it, but man, when it kicks in, it is like, like it's got a monster blower and it runs at full blast. So one of the first things I'll probably do is they ask us to give a little checklist when we move in of of issues with the apartment. I was like, wow, this is classy. (laughs) I've never had that before. (laughs) I've never had an apartment complex give give a damn about what I think about the place. So they really care here. So I'm going to let them know. Could you slow down the blower on the HVAC system? So it doesn't necessarily mean they can or doesn't mean that all systems can do it, but I do know that some HVAC systems, and I'm saying that, I mean the ventilation air conditioning system, um, the blower unit can sometimes have the ability to slow down the fan. It's like two wires. It's like the slow fan. You know, and you've got to go in yeah. there and actually do that. Yeah, there's jumpers, or you just literally move a wire to a different post or something like that, um, and it slows down the fan. Now, they may say, no, we can't do it. Oh, oh okay. Um, but they may they may try to accommodate. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Can you slow down the blower on the fan? It may still be too loud, but it's just something that you can try. And so Also, when I came in, yeah. Also, when I moved in, into this room, I have my own dedicated office space here. It's one of the two bedrooms. The vent, somebody had closed the veins on the vent partly. So they were partly shut. So when the thing was running, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know that sound, right? Yeah. So I think most people would think close the vent to stop the airflow. But that's not what you want to do. The last thing you want to do is impinge or impede it because in the air, it's, it's still going to come out, kids. <laughs> it ain't going to stop. It's just going to squeeze out smaller holes and make more noise. So I got up there with a screwdriver and jimmied the thing and opened up all the veins. I was about to actually remove the entire register, just leave a hole there, because that's the least restricted, right? Um, but uh, I didn't do it yet. But anyway, that made a big difference. So there's little things that you can do. You got to be creative. Now, the next thing I got to deal with, though, is that outdoor noise. And so what I plan to do there is to get some heavy uh, Lexan plexiglass oh. kind of material and make, I don't want to get rid of my windows. I mean, I, I actually can see the sunset kind of from this angle. It's, I don't want to lose that view. So I'm going to get some uh, plexiglass and try to make little window, make window inserts. Now this is going to be tough because these windows are not very deep. You know, somehow how some windows have a deep window sill and they give you at least two, three inches of space that you can. I'm have to put a cup of coffee on it. Yeah, well, there's a window sill that's about, the window sill is about that big, but the yeah. space between the end of the window itself and then the trim is like a half inch, maybe an inch tops. Mm. So I have to figure out how to wedge something into that tight little uh, gap. So that's going to be something else that I'm going to try to do. And there, there are kits you can find. There's retrofit window kits. Um, I want to try to do it with the least amount of destruction to the property. I don't want to drill... If I like can avoid zero because holes. you're renting. Yes, I'm <laughs> renting. I don't want to necessarily drill a lot of holes into the old window trim, you know. So I'm going to figure out how to do that and make it. I mean, you know, there's command strips these days. Maybe there's a way to do it with command strips. I don't know. That stuff's pretty cool, Dan. Have you, you know, you know the command strip Velcro, but they just have command strip sticky it's tape. Just, oh, yeah. There's all over the place. It's and used you can it. release it, you know. Yeah. Hang pictures with Brilliant. it. It's great. Yeah, so I'm going to see what I can do there. So that's that's what I'm up against, and it makes me have a new appreciation, a renewed appreciation, again, for what voice actors in any urban or suburban area have to deal with. It is it is challenging. So if you have time to look for places, if you I did, it, did this very quickly, um, but don't pick a place that has windows on three sides of the unit. 
there, there's, there are literally no interior spaces. You know, there's not like an, in, like there, there, there is the closet here, but it still has doors facing my windows, right? So right. there's really nowhere to, to go. You can't get away from it. It's great for a breeze. But um, yeah. yeah, if you see an advertisement saying, near the beach, breezy, that means <laughs> noise, noise, noise. Yeah, imagine if that's that was actually the view out your window behind you there. It's uh, <laughs> be a little noisy. Yeah, well, my office you can hear it right now. Like, it's I got I've got a few panels and some blankets tossed on the floor, but it is pretty barren in here right now. Yeah. So it's I put the green screen up because there's nothing to look at. Eventually, I'll have shelving with a whole bunch of tchotchkes and boxes and things to break up books. the reflections. you got to have books with lots of philosophers and stuff like books. that. Books. Yeah, there'll be some books. There'll yeah, be some there books, you go. So. But you know, um, you're going to learn an awful lot about how to silence those windows, which, of course, will benefit all the people we work with, I'm sure. Yeah, I, yeah. it's it's time to, to tackle this on my own and, and see what I can come up with that's, uh, you know, picky management company friendly. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Good I saw luck. their 30-minute long... A video, <laughs> their orientation video is like, addendum number 17 in your lease says that if you put a coffee cup on a windowsill, that, I was like, oh my God, there's so many rules. Gotta respect the wood. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's it for the move, but we'll see, I'll, we'll, I'll keep you guys posted, see what I come up with. Um, Twisted Wave 24, mentioned this on the show a couple weeks ago, it's out, it's in the wild, and my only bug I ran into has already been fixed because that's Thomas and that's how quickly he fixes stuff. But I wanted to try out the new um, uh, analyze in a batch feature. So I don't know how many people need this other than audiobook people. But to be able to try to speed up the process of mastering, we have a way now to put an analyze step in a batch so you can put all the processing you need, your limiter and whatever you're doing to, to get your RMS specs for ACX. But you can also put analyze in there. And so it will do a whole batch and create a spreadsheet and show you which files in that chapter, in that batch, fell outside of your uh, specs at a glance. Really awesome. But it was broken. And uh, so I taught a client how to use it, uh, made a little video. And then when I got to that step, it didn't work. But it's been fixed in 24.1. So if that's a feature you want to use, make sure you get the newest uh, update for Twisted Wave. And here's just a little quick kind of a, I didn't know this. Um, did you know? Uh, I probably didn't know it either. There's so many, that's what's fun about Apple. Like, um, you know, they don't give you a manual this thick. They give you a computer that you can kind of learn how to use without a lot of trouble. And the manual is just sort of hidden in the ethers. And you start learning things. over. The, it's really fun. So I just learned that if you have an iPhone or an iPad plugged into your Mac with USB, it's not a Wi-Fi thing. It's got to be plugged in. You can show the screen of your iPad or iPhone on your Mac really? and record it or just look at it or just screen share it. Um, and it's just, I thought you had to buy an app. There's an app called Reflector that does this for 15 bucks. Nope. If you load QuickTime and make a, and start a movie recording, so normally you'd be recording a webcam. Now, as long as your iPad or iPhone's plugged in and it's awake, now you have another video camera source. So oh. it'll be your webcam and you'll have iPad. Oh, and the camera and on an just, iPhone is spectacular. Well, th I, this is a different thing. This is actually not using the camera. This is just to be able to take the screen of your, of your device and show it on your computer. Oh. I don't know how many people really need to do this, and but if you're a trainer or teaching anybody anything, it's it's gold. In fact, I'm doing a webinar tomorrow, and it's about how to record on an iPad for Martha Khan, actually. Yeah. And um, it's, I'm going to be able to use this feature. So I thought that was a really cool thing, and I would never have known it had I not Googled it. And Apple had a little a little thing about about this cool trick. So you can use it to record the screen on your iPhone or iPad, or just share it to your computer that you can then subsequently share that with zoom which is what i'm going to do ah, okay. anyway makes sense. I thought that was a cool little little trick so anyway that's it for my tech update so let's talk about gas yes yeah now that's a term that you introduced to me because i never I think i picked it up on the vr on the v-o-b-b -B, oh, the yeah, voiceover board. bulletin board yeah yeah, and you know, I mean, there's our friends who do the the, the voiceover meter or the VO meter, 
Mm-hmm. We talk about Fuel questionable meters. purchase of the week. <laughs> um, questionable gear purchase. Yeah. G- gas, GAS stands for <laughs> gear, gear Acquisition Syndrome. It's not a good disease to have if you're a voice actor. Because, well, especially if you're a little bit tight on cash. Well, well yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you're well, if you're doing well and you got the space and and that's your hobby, well, have at it. Right. Well, but because, don't let it yeah. dictate how you do your voiceover work. Right. Because it's not the gear that gets you work. It's how you use it. And I don't know. We, we, we go into these Facebook forums and I think I've been going in there less and less Although I see your name pop up every now and again. And it's nice. If you see our names, please tag us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like a magic trick. If you want me to appear, tag me. Right. I, I will probably appear. Like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh. And it's at the point now with Facebook where I don't even want to look at the news feed. I just click on the little bell. Who's talking about me? Who's, yeah, that's talking, right. who's talking about me? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, tag us so we, we, you know, so we can we can join the conversation because that's about like you said, it's the only time we're going to do it. But we see constantly, you know. Well, of course, there's what's the best mic for mic, you know, for voiceover. Like mm-hmm. you're already way behind the eight ball, kiddo. Whoever you are. Uh, Which interface should I get? What interface? And then people start suggesting things. Oh, you should get this. Oh, you should, you get, should that. get the Apollo. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> Apollo Twin. Now. Nothing wrong with the Apollo. It is a fantastic interface. Well, but not I've for voiceover. A, quite a lot of people with problems with the Apollo, actually. But um, yeah, no, it's a fantastic piece of gear in the right hands and in the right circumstance. Yes, yeah, it's designed for people who know how to use one. Having it doesn't make you a better voice actor. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's the issue a lot of people have. Oh, I've got to have the best gear. Well, having it definitely the best... doesn't make your studio easier to to operate. No, it makes it harder. You know, I yeah. mean, most of this stuff was designed for people. You know, it there's the consumer level stuff. I mean, you, I mean, you look at some of the things like you know some of the focus right stuff that we recommend to people because it's great stuff uh, and simple to use and simple to use. <laughs> you know, here's the game. Sounds here, good. You plug it in, and you know that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. The more sophisticated the piece of gear, the harder it is to operate. And does it enhance your audio or does it make the shortcomings, as we were talking about earlier, more obvious? And I think that's probably one of the issues that you and I probably deal with more than anything else is people saying, well, I got one of these things. And I'm like, well, there's your problem right there. (laughs) You know how to use this thing. So you mean the thing that has three numbers in the name? Exactly. Or more. 286. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. why. That's the worst one. I is the people who recommend that you you get one of these external uh channel strips. Channel strips like a DBX 286 or the what are some of the other ones? Uh, you know, I I blanked out on some of the names of them because it's kind of the one, right? Yeah. I and, mean, and, and and everybody just buys the Apollos because they're like you got to get the 737 Avalon or the right, etc. It's not necessary. We've proved it. <laughs> yeah, we did prove it. We we now, went in, we went into my booth over here and we we tested like seven or eight different 12, interfaces. 12, twelve twelve different interfaces, give or take five or six. And and I've been I, I've talked to people who you know was just, I saw your video on the interface shootout and well, what was the point? They all sounded the same. We're like, duh, that's the whole point. Guys, yeah, it's true. They all sound about ninety-five percent the same. Right. And the only person that's going to hear the differences is some producer who's you know extremely picky about those little tiny subtleties. But when they're hearing your voice with your mic and your good room, as long as it's clean, you're not adding noise or distortion. The job is done. The gear is doing what it needs to do, and that's it. And if it's complicated to use day to day, if it is high maintenance, if you got to reboot the thing. If you got to buy a $50 cable to plug it in, if you got to be worried about the OS updating on and on, all the things that come along with these high maintenance, much more expensive, complicated interfaces, it's just not worth it for the it's vast not. majority of you. It's not. Yeah. Don't, you know, if, if you're looking for the best gear, if we tell you it's good, it is good because it's going to sound good. You don't want crappy. 
I think what happened, no. a lot of people buy stuff because they're desperate and they'll buy a Yeti or, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or a USB mic. And you can mm -hmm. make a USB mic sound okay, uh, but it's got to be a good USB. There's always a compromise. Like even the really good ones, there's a Sennheiser MK4 Digital. Right. That's a $400 USB mic. Sounds amazing, but it has no gain control on the mic. You got to so do it all You can't easily adjust yeah. the gain. It's just, there's just compromises when you buy the wrong gear. And uh, yes, things can be made to work, but they just aren't the easiest way to get it done and the most reliable. And that's what we recommend things that we know in the long run are going to make your life easy year after year. And it, John Bailey was just on. He is a prime example. He's been using the same mic. And the same basic interface, the Scarlet, for many years, and has had no felt no compulsion to 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 buy new stuff all the time. Exactly. So, so uh, yeah. So don't do that. Gas gear acquisition syndrome. It's something you need to be vaccinated against, and that's why <laughs> we're here. Yeah. Only you can prevent gas, <laughs> and we try to. Anyway, we got lots of questions from all of the folks out there who watch this show and have mailed in questions. And if you've got a question, you can throw it also into our Facebook chat room where Jeff Holman is sitting by or standing mm -hmm. by or however he's positioned. Uh, and he'll give us uh, those questions and we will ask those questions of ourselves and we will answer them ourselves and entertain you and make sure that you get the right understanding of the question and the answer. I'm not up. even sure what you just said, but I, I get it. It sounds like the presidential debate the other day. Anyway, coming up right after these messages. This is, this is the Latin, Latin lover, lover narrator, narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. One of the things we like to do on VOBS is to actually use the products that sponsor us. And here's a prime example, the Harlan Hogan V01A Signature Series Studio Condenser Microphone. Why? Not just because Harlan's a sponsor, but because the VO1A is possibly the only microphone that's actually designed and built strictly for voiceover. All other mics were designed to record music. It's the perfect mic for us, since we're all about VO. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what another user has to say. After 10 years of use down under, my signature series VO1A Harlan Hogan microphone still sells, whatever my contribution is. It's from your first sale in Australia in March 2010. Stay safe and keep well. Regards, Ian Wright, voiceover artist in Australia. And here's the deal. Prices on the manufacturer of the VO1A have gone up. It'll now retail for $349. But use this promo code and you can get yours for the old price of $339. Use this promo code now and get it for the old price of three thirty nine. Thanks, Harlan. Hey, everybody! This is the time on the show where Source Elements is mentioned in context of your studio. They, I mentioned context because they have many contexts at Source Elements. They've got products for post production, music, yes, it is, film. They're all over the place. And it's if you want to be in the play, in the game for the big paying gigs and voiceover, 
they're overwhelmingly using their technology called Source Connect. And Source Connect is a software that runs on your computer that allows your computer to link up to the studio's computer and send audio seamlessly back and forth real time. It's like being on the end of a virtual mic cable that travels from your studio around the world. And the sound quality is quite amazing. I mean, it is, it is very, very crisp and clear with no warbling or garbling. About the only thing that ever happens is maybe an occasional dropout if the internet gets extremely congested. And they even have workarounds and fixes for that. It's pretty amazing. Get yourself set up. Get a 15-day free trial over at source-elements.com. And if you get stuck, watch my uh, video over at georgethetech.com slash SC. And you can get yourself up to speed on using Source Connect. And none of that will cost you a dime. Just get yourself up and running and be ready to go. All right. Well, we appreciate their support, and we'll be back to answer a ton of questions right after this. You're, You're watching, watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Need anything? Did you have this trouble last week? No. no. Is it that? Or last time? No, it's, it's, I, I think the app is frozen. Uh, okay. okay, we got an NDI app on the iPhone. Believe it or not, the camera we're using for Dan tonight is an iPhone. And it looks better than our, our real camera. Yeah, it's but it's a little unstable sometimes. NDI. That's something that voice actors never have to talk about. NDI. Oh, I can't see stairs. Okay. Whoa. Oh, oh. That's a, it's, it, yeah, it's just reverse. There we go. Boink. All right. And action. We're back. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> All right. Technology. Anyway, uh, we got a we we have a couple of interesting questions. One here seems to have some stuff I've never heard of. Well, that makes it more fun. It Get does. your Google fingers right. I got my keyboard right here. I'm ready to Google. Okay, so, so. Let, let me read the question. As I read, you can Google away. Right. From Christy Crossley. I'm wondering if either of you are familiar with Voice Meter Banana as a digital mixer. <laughs> I looked it up. It's a virtual software mixer. Why? Mm. Just, <laughs> now to make things more fun. I use a universal Apollo uh, audio, uh, audio Apollo Twin USB interface with my PC setup, but it's mm -hmm. not voice over internet protocol VoIP uh, friendly. I've oh, recently not. started working with Voice Meter Banana, but I'm not s fully sure if I'm using it right. Okay, I've read the manuals and watched some really helpful videos on YouTube by Merrill Cox. I need to figure out how to set up my mixer for Skype and IPDTL calls. I do think I have a decent setup. Well, we've got to hear it to make sure. But I yeah. don't want to find myself trapped during a remote, realizing there's some glitch with the wrong bit depth, sample rate, or if I've got channels connected incorrectly. I can take screenshots and send them to you if you think it might help. My setup includes Universal Audio Console and Kako's Reaper as well. So you like things to be challenging. <laughs> That's what I'm picking up here, Christy. <laughs> Were you the one that always chose the hard way to do everything in school? I'm wondering. <laughs> I have a couple no cousins offense. like that. Yeah. No offense, but honestly, that is a really convoluted setup, and it's and I, I first of all, I do not at all recommend Apollo the Apollo stuff on Windows systems. It's not perfect on Mac. It doesn't work uh, properly with Zoom. On Windows, it's far worse. Um, it doesn't work with Chrome. There's so many issues, and that's why she's using voice meter. By the way, voice meter is spelled voice M-E-E-T-E-R. <laughs> like it's meeting two things together. That's voice meter. Yeah. Um, I'm familiar with voice meter. I know what it does. I'm not familiar with voice meter banana, but that sounds like it takes it to another level of being able to mix several things and bring them together. I can tell you this, though. Using these virtual software mixer devices and virtual sound driver devices is super prone to having problems when you're not expecting it or 
it's because it's all happening in a virtual console and it's un happening in preferences and, you know, all these different places you have to check the right box and change. There's just so many darn things that you can screw up. And yes, it will glitch on you right at the moment of a session or right yeah. when you really need and it. And that's but when don't, that, you know that's what's going that, that that's when it's going to happen. So, you know. Yeah, and then and then you combine the complexity of Reaper, which is also a really complicated DAW. I mean, it's a Pro Tools replacement and it's good. And it's really an affo it's really affordable, but my God, is it complicated? Really? Yeah. I guess the really question would be, what's she mixing? You know, I mean, she might be doing like a. a you She's know, just a trying to figure out how to get playback. Sort of I'm guessing yeah. trying to get playback from uh, from from Reaper to show up back in Skype or something like that. Mm. And um, I'm guessing that's what she's probably needing to use it for. It's just here's here's a quickie. I don't use software drivers and things to do this. I just get another audio interface. I'm not saying you got to get rid of the Apollo. If you've got it working and it's reliable and you understand how to use it and it's getting you gigs, great. But don't use that. Don't use these software tools to try to create these mix minuses and loopbacks and all this stuff. Just get another audio interface. The, the, my favorite is the Behringer UCA202. They're like 30, 40 bucks. Really inexpensive little USB interface, and just send the audio into that. Just send it out of the one of the outputs and into that, and now make that the input in your Skype or Zoom. Aren't we using one of those in our chain here? I think so. A little I, silver. I don't know how thing. many of those I've set up for people. <laughs> They're just problem solvers, and yeah, it may seem like you're doing a low tech solution because you're using an you know an, another audio device, and it's. Another analog cable. So what? This isn't a purist thing. This is about reliability and easy ease of use. And I yeah. find that to be way, way better way to go. Yeah. So yeah. And she yeah. Christy had a second part to the question. Just okay. to make it more interesting. Uh she says, I'm wondering if either of you are familiar no wait a that's that's the first part of the question. The two, said, do you two, need yeah. Do LDF. voiceover people need to consider LKFS forward slash L U F S in their produced audio are the broadcast standards. Oh, we all know how I love that term. Uh, mm -hmm. The same when submitting voiceover as they are for a finished product. Is there some element of variation required in the process, like gain staging when I meet the peak at minus three dB required for submitting auditions like LKFS reading is always higher than the minus 24 standard I've read about, usually around minus 20. Are you getting confused? I am. Don't get to talk a lot uh, to a lot of other voice actors, but a few I've talked to aren't as familiar with engineering. Gee, you well, think? Well, what do you know? <laughs> Since more vo voice people don't know, does this mean that it has no bearing on the auditions I'm submitting? Or is there some way I should be incorporating that into my project settings to better reach the LKFS numbers needed by the end users? In other words, no! <laughs> That's the short, easy answer. No. <laughs> Until the day comes where you get audition scripts saying auditions must have an LUFS rating of 20 or something, you don't need to know anything about LUFS or LKFS. What does that mean? I've never it, heard that term before. Yeah, it's just a, a, new, a newer technical way of measuring average volume. So we used to always just oh. use the word RMS. Right. You know, for average volume. And LKFS and LUFS are different ways of calculating sort of what average volume is. They just do it in a different way. LKFS uses loudness K-weighted, which is relative to the full scale uh, in the standard loudness measurement unit used for audio normalization, broadcast television systems, and other video and music streaming services. LKFS is standardized in the ITU-RBS 1770 spec. That's from 1970? Oh, no, it's called the BS-1770. No question. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Broadcast standard, I guess, yeah. this, is what this BS is, stands for. This is something, you, if you were going to an AES convention, you'd hear this. Oh, yeah, there'd be whole clinics on this. There'd be, like, symposiums on LKFS right, at, yeah. at a broadcast convention. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's the you don't really need audio to worry engineer about society. Yeah, but yeah, not yet. Um, and, and essentially, those two terms, LUFS and LKFS, are essentially interchangeable. And both Lost. useless. Yeah, Lux maybe is easier to remember because it's loudness units, L-U, loudness units, full scale. That's what it means. But anyway, 
it's just an average volume reading that's using different math. And if somebody asks for it, chances are your software has a way to measure things based on that. And I know Reaper happens too, so don't worry about it too much yet. Yet. Okay. All right. My camera seems to have frozen, but you can hear me. Well, we hear you, and that's what's most important. Okay, so keep talking. All right, so and this one says, uh, "Thank you so much for dealing with my query about different sample recording rates on Tech Talk number thirty-five." But having fallen into the technical weeds, I'm now struggling to get back to the surface. I think this is regarding the next question, not the last question, right? Because there's no name to. I don't know who this is. Sorry, that's okay. But whoever you are, you know who you are, and hopefully this helps. It says, I have to render a file at a different sample rate to the recording sample rate. Reaper resamples the render at a default rate of 192 PT sync, which it classifies as good, but also offers several higher rates up to extreme high quality 768 PT sync. By the way, I have no idea what SINC means. <laughs> I've never seen it before. I understand that a higher rate means lower noise and distortion, but it can also take much longer. So is good at 192 PT good enough for the average voice track? There's this is the problem with Reaper. <laughs> it's got it's so complicated. It was designed for a total audio genius geek for other audio genius geeks, and so it has terminologies and specs and things that you don't care about Not what you care acting. about is yeah what you care about is kilobits per second and so if you're recording us and making an mp3 at 192 kilobits per second you're good that's what you that's you're fine never need to go above that unless somebody says otherwise anything higher you can't really hear the difference in quality and like you said it may take longer to encode the file will be larger so don't worry 128 Kilobits per second mono MP3 is perfectly fine for auditions, and audiobooks ask for 192. So I don't know what the PT, 192 PT SINC stands for. That one, you kind of lost me. I'm not, I don't know if you correlated two different sets of terminology or jargon and got them mixed into one question. I'm not really sure. That one's kind of, I'm stu that stumped me. I don't know what sync is. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. You stumped the chumps here. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, but the fact of the matter is, is this is stuff that's not relevant to voiceover recording in a home studio. Yeah, that's the problem with these really complicated programs. That's right. This next question, though, this this is an easy answer from Jim McNicholas, and I'm not sure if we answered this one last week, but it doesn't well, sound familiar. We'll answer it fast then. Yes. Uh, nerd question. Okay. Uh, home studio build. Computer fan is producing a minus 56 dB hum at 245 and 345 hertz. Don't want to don't want to high pass at 400 hertz. No, you, no, don't. you don't. But need to get it to minus 60 for ACX. No, I don't. do noise reduction and it works. I have my computer as far away from my desk as cables will allow. Help. Get longer cables and put the computer somewhere else. Or put your microphone far away from the computer. Do not rely on technology to fix something as easy as that. It's yeah. it's like, okay, well, I've got this noise, so I'll use technology. No, always physically do what you can to get rid of the noise. Do not use technology and noise reduction. Yeah, and it's probably the hard drive spinning in that computer. I almost guarantee it. It's probably not the fans. So, um, yeah, just, just get rid of the motors and things that spin. And worst case, get a quieter computer. There's definitely very inexpensive, affordable, fanless, or very silent computers. So, you know, there's, there's solutions. But, you know, I was going to say a high pass would be really bad. A notch, if I got the file and I had to fix it as the engineer, then I would use something called a notch EQ, and I would notch exactly at those two frequencies and dip them down so they're less noticeable. But that is a Band-Aid fix. And like Dan said, you want to avoid those. Because when that studio says, we're going to do Source Connect tomorrow, we'd like to hear how your studio sounds. Please do not do any processing. And if that noise is there, they may go, meh, that doesn't sound so hot. We can't use that audio. So try to fix it at the source. Okay, next one. Okay. 
I'm Frank I'm Romeo. here. I know I'm here, but you know, with the cameras, just, I know. It's 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 it's, there. it's it's being a hassle okay. With we'll it. just use yeah. my frozen picture until I'm not the audio is good. Anymore. There we go. It's okay. Now I'm back. All right. Uh, Frank Romero says, "Oh, perfect. Yes, that's what they." <laughs> Actually, just move a little to the left there. Okay. Uh, says, uh, I want to reduce echoes from reflective surfaces in my booth, top of desk and music stand primarily. That shouldn't be causing any problems at all. Is closed cell foam, a camp pad, covered with a thick towel or carpet total overkill? What do you recommend? Follow-up. Is there treatment material that'll do the same for a monitor screen? My booth is 3 feet 11 inches square inside and more asymmetric treatment. What is it with Ooh, you guys? Wow. <laughs> Are we totally frozen here? I'm not sure. I'm just seeing you on the the key shot. Now I'm seeing myself, but okay. with Dan's hand frozen in front of my face, <laughs> which is funny. It's still not as um, it's still not as good as you holding up me up on an. It's iPhone, still not so. as good as using the phone on Skype and holding <laughs> up to the webcam. Okay. That that takes the cake. We're not there yet. We're not there yet, folks. Okay. Um, <laughs> and anyway, uh, so. Um, it, when talking about Close acoustics, foam yeah. camp pad with thick towel overkill, it's not going to help with reflections. You, you don't use closed cell foam to deal with reflections because closed cell foam will actually reflect sound. So that's not going to absorb reflections. You need open cell foam, and that's what acoustical foam is. Towels are the best thing, probably. The best absolute dirt cheap thing besides moving blankets are towels. Um, I even saw a video where a guy made acoustical panels out of old towels, and they worked great, actually. Um, so towels are the best thing you can possibly use. Um, everything else, if you just layer it up, it will get rid of more and more noise. It'll stop more transparent or transmission of noise, but it won't uh, do a really good job acoustically. So yeah. the, the, um, the thing is, is yeah. we've got to hear it. I, sometimes I yeah. find that people are hearing things that aren't really there. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's important that they try to send their audio to someone who knows what they're talking about, which would be you and me. Uh, and let us hear it. Because a lot of times people describe a problem and it's like, it's a hum, it's a buzz, it's a clicking, it's a this, it's a that. And, uh, oh, okay. Click, 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 click. Yeah, and now, and now, and now, and now Sue, Sue has, has I like using her phone. Actually. No, no, it's, it's working, working. It's, it's working. working. Yeah, there, there we go. go. Sue's, Sue's now got, got, got me, me on, on here with, 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 with Hey, that's phone. a behind the scenes shot. Nobody It is. You can, you can now see what a mess my office is. That's awesome. Um, um, anyway. But, go ahead. Yeah, so I would say if you're just trying to stop the, uh, stop the echo off your desk, then just put a nice old, uh, nice thick terry cloth towel on your desk. That's going to be enough. Yeah. Um, and then for transparent material for a display, I don't know of any transparent material that you can see through without it completely ruining your picture that also is acoustically going to um, absorb sound. Now, my friend Byron Wagner, he hung some very heavy clear vinyl over because his display he can. to give it a shot, and it was still transparent. And yes, you could see that it was there, but it wasn't too bad theory being that it might reflect less sound than the glass that's on the display you could give it a shot but i don't think it's going to do a whole lot and there's no clear foam or anything that you can see through that will acoustically also work that i know of yet all right maybe aerogel look that one up okay. um <laughs> just don't use bed foam great for preventing Bed stores, bed stores, but not for not for voiceover yeah. uh, acoustical treatment. Everybody, I just put all this bed foam on. Up. It's, it's like, like okay. okay. <laughs> um, um, all, right. all right, Nicholas, Nicholas Clements Clem says, "I need a less than three hundred dollar microphone for my next upgrade of a mic." No problem. Okay, there's so there's a bunch up, there. It, yeah, it's a, you went under three hundred, but it's an upgrade, so you must be starting with an under two hundred dollar mic. Maybe? Yeah, not sure, but um. I would say, uh, you know, the, the Rode NT1, the Harlan Hogan MXL V01A. AT4040. AT4040, AT2035. That's half the price. So they'll get yeah, an, an upgrade, upgrade from where you started. Start. Hmm. How's this show? Um, <laughs> the, the Rode NT G4 actually impresses the heck out of me. I've used it on many of our shows. Those are readily available under $300. Hmm. Hey, I, I got an idea. One. Let's just put that one in, in, the, in, the, in here, 
and see if that works. Yeah, because I can't handle it. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, and going back a question while they get the camera sorted out, Patricia had also asked about female mics that are good for female voiceover. Yes, and um, I missed that one. That that's mics that are. I th- generally, when people say, "Is it good for a female voiceover?" My translation of that is. Is it a really bright mic that would make me sound more sibilant? That's basically the only thing I can think of that would be make a certain mic not good on some female voices. If you're already sibilant, you don't want a sibilant mic like a Rode NT1A. Right. I um, I found the 416 to be, to be a little, little sibilant. sibilant. It's, it's definitely sibilant. sibilant. Uh, but mm-hmm. I also find that sibilance is again a physical problem. It is, and that it, and it's men and women. It it, it, it generally comes to men and women. It's not just women from over projecting your voice, and you know trying to be too loud, mm-hmm. and you're trying to have a private one-on-one conversation with people, and right. that way. The amazing thing is, is when you talk to people, you don't hear sibilance. Why you only hear it on a mic? Because you're on a mic and you're pushing it too hard. So right. just talk the way you normally talk, and the mic will pick you up that particular way. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we got um, time for like one last question here. Pick a sweet one. Let's see. Uh... Uh, okay. Well, Catherine Campion asks, it. why don't you read that one so you can okay. answer that one? Well, that one's more of a comment. So I'll read that, and then I'll read the question right above it, because I think that's okay. a good question, too, okay. actually. Um, Catherine says, if you're in SAG after the foundation offers free consultation and evaluation sessions for your home studios. From who? <laughs> Must be Mike. Mike. I, don't I don't know. Somebody, Somebody over, over there. there. Thank, Thank you, you for, for pick, pick, tossing, tossing people, people to other places, Catherine, after I let you borrow a mic and everything. Well, you know, yeah, I only, I, 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 I designed the place for free, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let it go. Um, anyway, Carl Gillette, uh, he had asked him, I have a well-treated but very small studio that does sound very slightly boxy. Okay. Um, George has mentioned using the figure eight pattern on a condenser mic, and I'm considering trying one. Can you, generally speaking, elaborate on the pros and cons of that? Will it add some air or space? Does it alter the proximity effect close up and at a distance? And the answer is, it depends. It does depend. <laughs> have you experimented? I mean, I've I've been doing this more lately. Do you have any figure eight? I mean, you got ribbon mics, so you know what they were, know what they well, do. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't use the ribbon mics a whole lot for you know any production purposes. They're just for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, you know, I use a four sixteen, and I I have another mic that I can put into a figure eight pattern. But I haven't tried it because... Because you have a well-tuned room. You I don't have, have a well-tuned a room. I've got two well-tuned rooms. It's like right. if you've got a well-tuned room, you don't need to do that. So that's right. why, well, let me try if, uh, fixing the settings. Try fixing the room, I think, is probably a better answer. Yeah, I mean, if you're that close to having a good sounding, you might find that moving the mic an inch, or inch closer or moving the mic three inches to the left... Because, like, you know, the room's going to resonate in specific places in the room. Find the sweet it, spot. So, yeah, there's going to be a sweet spot where it's not resonating. So the con of figure eight is that the mic tends to be a little more dull, so it loses some of the air. And that's what I've been finding anyway. And it will pick up more from the back, which, if the back of the mic is facing something reflective, is bad. Um, so, in some cases, figure eight's going to be worse. Um, but in some cases, it's going to be better. And you're not going to know until you actually experiment and try it out. Um, if you're not so sure, then get a mic with a return policy, rent a mic, borrow a mic, buy a really cheap figure eight mic, like a AKG Perception 420, I think it is. Those are pretty cheap. Those are multi-pattern. Um, you know, just get a mic you can experiment with. But um, it's going to depend. But it will make more proximity effect. When you put it in figure eight, it will build more proximity effect. So keep that in mind. It will actually change the low-end response. All righty. Well, you can't see me, but I'm here. We're going to take a break. break. And I believe you. Oh, oh, there, there we, we are. are. Now, now we're back. back. Uh, uh, so now, so now, now you, you can't, can't see me. See, we've actually switched phones, but you wouldn't even know it. You know, we're using Sue's phone now. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, we'll be right back to wrap things up. Thank you for all your questions. Send them in to the guys at VOBS.tv. And we'll be happy to answer them here on VoiceOver Tech Talk. We'll be right back. You're You're watching watching VOBS.TV. 
I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Okay, you get an audition and you see the dreaded words, accents, dialects. They can be showstoppers. You think to yourself, I can't do that well enough to compete. I'll pass. Well, what if I told you you could do that and do it well enough to compete with all the other voiceover talent in your category? All it takes is understanding how to build an accent from scratch. And the accents class is the way to do it. David of EO Heroes knows firsthand because his coach is Jim Johnson, the creator of the accents class. And registration just opened for this amazing five-week program that will show you how to build a new accent from scratch in plenty of time to submit even the fastest moving auditions. Just visit voheroes.com forward slash accents and check out the training there. That's voheroes.com forward slash accents. Once again, voheroes.com forward slash accents for the accent class. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. One of the things we like to do on VOBS is to actually use the products that sponsor us. And here's a prime example, the Harlan Hogan VO1A Signature Series Studio Condenser Microphone. Why? Not just because Harlan's a sponsor, but because the VO1A is possibly the only microphone that's actually designed and built strictly for a voiceover. All other mics were designed to record music. It's the perfect mic for us, since we're all about VO. But don't just take my word for it. Here's what another user has to say. After 10 years of use down under, my signature series VO1A Holland Hogan microphone still sells, whatever my contribution is. It's from your first sale in Australia in March 2010. Stay safe and keep well. Regards, Ian Wright, voiceover artist in Australia. And here's the deal. Prices on the manufacturer of the VO1A have gone up. It'll now retail for $349, but use this promo code and you can get yours for the old price of $339. Use this promo code now and get it for the old price of $339. Thanks, Harlan. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Wow, wow it's, it's almost, almost like, like it used, it used to, be, to be, where every, every week, week it's, it's Apollo, Apollo 13. 13. <laughs> but, but to show you that we never panic in these situations, it's always, well, what else can we do? Oh, I use somebody else's phone. Yeah, the flop sweat days are over on this show. Yeah. We're just like, oh, At well. least they were. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, next week, we've got another great guest coming on the show. Not exactly sure. There's maybe two people that are, like, fighting over the chance to be on. So we'll see who that'll be. Uh, and uh, But we do have donors, and we really appreciate those people because they keep the show going. And, uh, and yep. they show their support, and we really appreciate that. And who are some of those people? Well, we got Larry Hudson, Dana Birdsall, Lee Penny, Brian Page, Stephanie Sutherland, Patty Gibbons, George Whittem, that's my dad. And Don Griffith, and lastly, but definitely not leastly, Martha Kahn. All right. Yes, I Kahn Productions. Thank you. Um, you know, we, ha we also have some great sponsors for this show. And the fact of the matter is, is along with your help, this show wouldn't be able to be possible without them. And some of them have been with us really, truly from the beginning, almost 10 years, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Voiceover Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. 
and JMC Demos. Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Each and every one of you. Thank you, Jeff thank Holman. Yes. Each and every one of you. Each and every one, and God bless them one and thank all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, right. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Jeff Holman doing another bang-up job in the Facebook chat room. Appreciate him getting the questions to us. Mm -hmm. Sue Merlino pulling her hair out, but keeping her mask on <laughs> as we try to solve technical issues while we're doing this. But hey, that's half the fun of the show. So uh, some people just like, it was like, remember we used to say it was like, it's Indy 500. People love to see the crashes, but they want to see the guy come up and wave. Hey, I'm okay. <laughs> wave. I'm all right. And occasionally have a fight with the other driver. That's occasionally, yeah. It's definitely in NASCAR you see that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Again, if you've got questions for us, write to us at the guys at vobs.tv. How we got that one, I don't know, but... Good job getting that URL, George. We always appreciate that one. Uh, and uh, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, it's important to make sure that you're not overthinking your home voiceover studio. Because really, in the long run, if it sounds good. It is good. All righty. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time.